And we are live. Hey. <laughs> what a little pumpkin. And he's so cute. <laughs> he's so cute. All right, let's wait for people. We are waiting. Uh, Just waiting. And I'm actually going to move the camera. <laughs> oh, I got to turn this down. Again. Yes, turn it down. Again. All right. Let's <laughs> Candy shared it. I shared it. Oh, we got one person! Who's here? Who's here? Whoop, whoop. I'll show you my Yeah, yeah, How does that work with the love? John Mitchell! How you doing? <laughs> we have a special guest. A Wouldn't you like in. to know who our special guest may be? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have to wait a few minutes. It's a cute little pumpkin. What's what's a song, Daniel? We could sing a song in the in the middle of the waiting. <laughs> Isn't that a song in the waiting? <laughs> uh, I don't know. We got three. Who we got? Just no. We got so, one. We dropped them. Oh off. no! Dropping like flies. Oh, we got two. Go ahead. Okay. One. Back to one. My pillow talks. <laughs> it's my pillow pet. The pillow talks. The pillow talks. Okay. So anyhow, um, we're here. We're gonna do a live. Yeah. We were gonna <laughs> we're go out location. in the streets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were gonna go out in the streets and minister to people, but it didn't quite look the way it did in my mind. Right. So it was kind of a major fail. <laughs> Plan B. <laughs> Plan B. <laughs> so. So. Um, yeah. Anyhow, we have, my name is Candy, if you don't remember that. No, I'm Daniel. Yes. And we are um, here to pray and to just... Release the kingdom. Release the kingdom. Amen. And we have a special guest tonight. And that's yeah. what our big reveal. You like our pumpkin? She's a pumpkin. Oh, no, no, no. <gasps> oh we it's... almost saw her <laughs> eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, see the green tassel? Can you see it? Yes. Okay. No, I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> I met this special guest. We were um, having, like, we, once a week we were coming together and just sharing our hearts. And what a blessing. She, she there's your big reveal, is amazing. Don't reveal it yet. I got to um, fix the camera. She is a powerhouse and just a beautiful person. And so I'm excited to be able to, we're actually in her house tonight. We she are. She opened her home up. And um, my epic fail was, you know, she she was just game and went ahead and <laughs> did what I suggested. And when we got here, it was just like, not feeling that. <laughs> so, yeah, it didn't work out. The she's way. amazing, though. So I'm excited. You're going to love her. And, um, yeah, so just um, when Daniel's done, we'll introduce, introduce. our special guest. And, and uh, yeah. Yeah. This so, is my first time meeting her tonight, too. Yeah, Daniel hasn't met her before either. And um, you guys are going to love her as much as I do. So, anyhow, our special guest is. Bum, ahead, bum, bum. Jen Manjamelli. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> you pumpkin. Yes. Do you love my little pumpkin here? <laughs> I do. Awesome. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. So, we were just talking about different things to discuss tonight. And, um,. What was, what was on your heart there, Jen? Um, what was on my heart was to talk to everyone out there about healing. I keep seeing a lot of um, people posting out there about sicknesses and illnesses and diseases that are being put on them. And I just want to let people know that that is all lies. It's all lies from the enemy. That is never from God. Um, God would never put that on his children. He loves us so much. Um, we are not to even have such a thing as a cold, a virus, a sniffle, nothing like that. So when that gets comes upon us, um, which the Bible tells us that things are going to come upon us um, because of us living in the sinful, fallen world. But here's the thing is, we have to know God's word. You, God's word is the living word. Yeah. It, every scripture in that Bible, if you are, if any kind of, Sickness, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's cancer, um, that they told you that it's stage four, that there's nothing they could do, or if it's AIDS, if it's um, anything that is going to kill you, that is a life sentence. That is a curse that was put on you. And you never believe that. You never receive that, and you rebuke that. Mm -hmm. um, 
you need to know the scriptures. You have to know that you could command things to be to leave your body. You need to know that Jesus' word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if his word says, by his stripes we are healed, his word says that we were wounded for our transgressions, we were, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, but by his stripes we are healed. The, mm. That's in Isaiah. Isaiah 53, 14, I believe it is, or 53, 4. Um, but it says it in there. It, it doesn't say that we will be healed, may be healed. It says Might that we healed. are, are healed. So that means that when he did that 2,000 years ago on the cross, he took all of that for us. He bored everything for us. So, so please, if anybody out there is needing to, to help somebody who, anybody who was just diagnosed with cancer or any kind of debilita debilitating disease, I, if it's Crohn's, if it's colitis, if it's any of that stuff, don't receive that. When you hear that report from the doctor, you know, thank the doctor for, for being there for you, but find out, you know, what, what you, what needs to be done, but you need to go and pray with the Lord. You need to pray with other believers. You need to have people come, come to your home to, to lay hands on you, to be, you can be healed there. We have that power in us, the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead Damn. lives inside of us. Resurrection he's he's inside of us. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So that little he that's in the world, that's the he. That's the John 10.10. 10. That's the, the enemy comes in the night like a thief to come and kill, steal, and destroy our joy. Mm -hmm. But Jesus came to give us life and life more in abundance. Mm -hmm. you got to remember that to read past John 10.10 10 and go to John 10.11. That is what is going to keep you alive. You got to believe that. You got to also, too, you got to have that vision. If something's put on you all over your house, you're going to put scriptures everywhere. And, and get the pictures out of your photo albums of when you're healthy. When you put those pictures out there, you're going to see that vision of that's who you are because God's word says that you are healed. You're restored. You're delivered. You're redeemed. That's who you are. We, He is the great I am. That's what. That's what we are. We are God's masterpiece. We are not to have any sicknesses, illness, or diseases. So if you know of anybody out there who needs that, please get in touch with us. Um, we, we are more than willing to come and pray for you or pray for you here. Um, we're, we're, that's what we're here for. We, are, we, we believe in God's word, and that is the only report that we will ever believe and receive. And we just thank you for that. And I just have to share that because every time I'm on Facebook, I'm seeing somebody post that. Don't call yourself cancer. Don't call yourself colitis. Don't call yourself Crohn's. Don't call yourself AIDS. Because that's not what God sa says that we are. That's right. you're, you're his child. You're, you're, you are what his, his word says. So we just, we just want, I just need to get that out there. And I'm just yeah. glad that um, Candy and Daniel are here this evening and that I can just speak, speak what the Lord has put on my heart, and that is so, um, where I'm at. Can you share a little bit, uh, just a little bit about yourself as far as testimony? Like, how did you become, like, how did you become born again? Um, I became born again in 2011. Me I, too. Um, awesome. Yeah. I you became, guys are such cute yeah. babies. <laughs> I know. <Well. laughs> I think we're, what, six? Yes, we're six. Aww, <laughs> so but, old. We're, we're in elementary God's now. Do, God's doing a rapid thing. Amen. We're actually like 50. Oh, okay. Oh, like exactly. dog years. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That, that might be a little prideful. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> so um, I was at the time going through um, a separation from my husband. Um, my mom had died in 08. My mom's twin sister died in 2010. I had two miscarriages in that time frame. Wow. Uh, one of my best friend's husband killed himself, a real dear, dear friend of mine. My cousin died of a drug overdose. Um, a friend of ours died of cancer. My um, uh, friend's husband who died of cancer nine months later, her son was killed by a drunk driver. And I just wow. thought to myself, oh my gosh. How many gosh, deaths like, was that in your uh, life? Like in, just in that time frame was seven. Seven deaths wow. in a period of like yeah. six it's, months? It, that was, no, it was a little bit over two year time okay. and then two miscarriages. And then last year I had 10 deaths and a divorce. So, uh, and, I, and I am right now at the point that 
at that time frame back then when the seven deaths happened and everything, I just thought to myself, like, if there's, I cried out in my spirit and I said, if there's even a God out there, like, where are you? Like, I don't even know what to believe. Like, I didn't even have really much of an upbringing in church. I never really hardly went. We would go once in a while on Christmas, maybe Easter, stuff like that. What um, kind of church did you go to? I grew up in a Catholic church. Me I received all, all my sacraments, all that stuff. So I just was like, I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know even about having a personal relationship. I didn't know that... Um, about being born again that and to even learn about that. I didn't, so where's I the consolation even... when you're going through all the griefing, the grief and the deaths well, in, in your faith at that time at, at that at your church? Um, well, I wasn't even going to church, okay, so even I going. wasn't. Okay. So when I cried out in my spirit, basically the Lord was like, I and I was like, if there's even a God, just take me in my sleep, take me out of my misery. Like wow. I didn't, you know, I was like, what what do I need to live for? Like everybody's being taken out of my life. Like I mean. Yes, I know I had two babies, but I, I was struggling. It was awful, and I was just beyond. I, was, I literally was knocked to my knees, and, and he basically was like, no, I'm not going to take you. Um, I don't take, and he, but I'm go what I'm going to do is I'm going to put people in your path, and I'm going to show you the way. So he started putting people in my path, and I, this couple that I met, Bill and Lee, um, were out, and they're like, I, they came to help me and my children. Um, they were just little at the time. I was out to dinner by myself with them. They were just toddlers and infants and stuff. And I was just like, and they invited me to their church, and that's where I I gave my life to Christ and stuff. Cause I I just and I just knew I just it, it was like something lifted off of me when I said that that prayer and I gave my life to Christ and it has changed my life since then. So I you mean, noticed the difference between our tradition and our relationship? Oh my gosh, yes. I I I. He's my source. I go to him for everything. I talk to him every day, all day long. Um, I can't get enough of his word. I listen to different sermons from different um, pastors and preachers from all over the world. And um, I research this stuff. I love to research um, his word. I love to find out things. Um, I, I only believe his word. What, I, was, what was your uh, difference between tradition versus actually knowing him um well the traditional way of what i had learned i felt so removed i i felt guilt i felt shame i thought oh my gosh i gotta go confess my sins before i'm forgiven um so i had you know i did i did it was like oh i don't think i could go receive this communion i just you know i felt and as soon as i ended up learning about the relationship Every guilt and shame was, was was no longer there. So having that personal relationship, I'm like, if if I do something wrong, I repent, you know, because that's where my heart is. Because I don't want to do wrong. And and you 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 just grow as as the years go on. And I just I I want him to be, you know, I want to be I want to be in, walk in obedience with him. Yeah. And when I don't. I, I know I do wrong and I you know repent so I I'm forgiven immediately by our by our father mm -hmm. I might not be, be forgiven immediately from some of the stuff I maybe said out of my mouth you know to people that I shouldn't have said and you know and I and I feel bad about that but uh, and I you know ask the Lord for forgiveness for that so uh, but now I basically understand that you know church is for it, it, it's it's for the sinners not the saints that's right. you know that's it's right. it's for the broken you Amen. know like that's we right. all are broken and yes. stuff like that and he can fix us he can renew us he can renew and restore he he's in the business of restoration that's yes right. so for so people for restoring that goes for everything that goes for your any diseases that goes for your finances that goes for relationships, for marriages. You believe for that because that's what the that's what the Lord's word says. Now, as a baby Christian, how did you start all that though? Like, where was your starting point? Well, my girlfriend, after I moved um, back to Pittsburgh from Scranton, um, and and she introduced me to Victory Church up in Cranberry, and I that's went right. to I went to a Bible based church. They only 
you know, where you, you just went and you listened to a pastor and stuff. And then I was like, oh my gosh, the pastor's married. Wow, that's how God wow. created it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, wow. like, you know, like it's like you're not like, oh my gosh, like you can't be married and stuff. I'm like, I was thinking to myself, everything that I learned, I'm like, this is wrong. This is all wrong. Right. I'm like, we are, you're, God created man and woman. He created Adam and Eve and so that we're not alone and stuff. And then he said right. in his word to go to and be pro, alone. To, <laughs> to procreate. So yeah. like how, so the, you know, the church I grow up in, it's not putting them down because I know there's a right. lot of, Absolutely. you know, a good, you know, people that come out of the Catholic church, but it's like, I knew that there was more. I knew that I, there's things that were missing. It, I knew that like, that I, I knew always something was missing. And I basically knew that I was that lost soul. And that now I'm found in, yeah. in Jesus. Yeah, that's yeah. so good. <laughs> that's beautiful. So, yeah, that's awesome. So you, so you go to Victory now on Sundays? I go to Victory, but now, well, now I just started at the new church at Hill City. Oh. Over at the Embassy Suites. Um, Zach Blair and, Zach and uh, Lauren, Lauren. Yes. They so. were my uh, youth, or like 19 North. They were the pastors there when I went to 19 North. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really cool. So um, how do you like uh, Hill City Church? Is I it a nice? Love it. I went to um, when they started like just having their, I think it was like they're just, it was like a very starting point mm -hmm. um, they had. And I went and that was really nice. They just shared what was going on. But yeah, that seems like a pretty cool church. It is. It's awesome. I I definitely have been crying at just about every service, mm -hmm. you know, so I Does know. Zach mainly teach or does Lauren or do they both? Or how does that work? Zach mainly. Um, Lauren's gotten up. I got up there and, and has said some stuff. Um, cool. Yeah. Very That's nice. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh great God. people. Yes. Beautiful yeah. hearts. Just great, great people. That is awesome. So, yeah. So, who do we have on here? So, that's our question for you. Is there anything that you need prayer for? Um, we would love to get you up here yeah. and pull you up on our Facebook so you're here with us and we could pray for you. And, um, you know, let the Lord just minister to your spirit. If there's something that you would like prayer for, or we can just ask God to give us, give you yeah, something. Absolutely. So, um, I had a dream the other day that I was praying for somebody that had a goiter on their neck. And it was obvious that this man needed healed in my dream. His head was tilted and the goiter was huge. And so when I'm looking at him, in my dream, he's telling me, I said, how are you? And he said, I'm not good. My mom just died. And I'm thinking, you need prayer for the goiter. <laughs> you know, because my eyes are just like drawn to the goiter. I want to command it to go, command for healing over him. And in my dream, he kept talking about his heart being broken and how he needed, he, he was just broken because he was mourning. He was, he was in mourning. And uh, so... The Lord whispered to my spirit in this dream, and he said, you don't pray for the obvious, you pray for the root. And when you pray for the root, then the obvious will be healed. It might be out on the counter. And so the Lord was showing in this dream that when we're praying for people, like we may see somebody who is in a wheelchair and we want to go up and see this radical miracle where God, just let them get out of the wheelchair. We're believing for them to walk again. <coughs> but yet they may be comfortable and that and they may not have that as what they want prayer for. And there may be a deeper issue. And so the Lord was just even teaching me to, again, we walk by faith. Not, Not by, by sight. sight. And so it's like, my sight was like, man, you need that goiter gone. But it was just like the Lord wanted to get to the heart issue. That the iniquity where that entered, the enemy had permission to come. Like you said, sickness and disease is not ours. No. So where did the enemy have an opening to get in there to cause that spirit of iniquity, to cause that goiter to grow? And that was what the root was. What is the root? Amen. So, there's someone on here that wants prayer for, uh, I think, anxiety. Awesome. Okay. So, Megan, okay. So, we're going to hop on here to see. If... Would you please come on with us? Yeah, and we could pray for you. All right. So, Megan, we're going to. Megan? And then, Stacy, we will pray for you after Megan. Dude. 
Saturday. And thank you for letting us pray for you. You know, it's like, it's a, it's an honor and a blessing to get to pray for somebody. Absolutely. Our sisters and brothers, you know, to lift them up where two or more are gathered in his name. He's in our midst. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Inviting Megan. So what does Megan have to do? There's at the bottom of your phone, there's a little um, camera, a green camera with a plus sign. Is that what she hits or what does she I don't, hit? I don't, we're, this is kind of new too. So, but I know that I invited her. I don't know what she has to do. <laughs> I think that's what happened last week. They had to hit that little green thing. Yeah. Invite me again, please. Okay. All right. So here we go. Now I, I think I can hit Megan and then she should be able to come on now. Okay. Megan, he invited you. Connecting. Connecting. Here we go. Hi, Megan. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you for uh, joining us. Thank you. And so you were you were requesting prayer. Yeah. For... Well, for my mom, my mom for one, she's got bathroom issues. Okay. And she's on medication for it. And I just recently found out I have depression. And I got anxiety, too. And then there's my grandmother that she has a uh, bad foot that's deteriorating. Okay. All right. So what is it? It's the mom. What is your mom's name? Karen. 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 Okay. And your name's Megan. Mm -hmm. So you have depression. Mom has. And you said your grandma? Yeah. My grandma's Joanne. Joanne. Okay. All right. Karen, Megan, and Joanne. All right. Start? all right, I'll start, and then, all right. You go next. Uh, if, you know, whatever. All right, so, uh, you, Father, we just thank, thank you, you for Megan. Yes, God. Father, I thank you for her life, Lord. I thank you that she's more than just a number. God, I thank you that you made her significant, that there's no other Megan out there. There's, like, she is one out of a thousand, and you made her just the way she is. God, I pray that you show her how unique and how special she is, God. God, I pray that you show her identity of how valuable she is, Lord. God, I pray that you soften her heart, ask you to heal her heart from traumas in the past. God, I pray for all rejection to leave, Megan. Father, I ask that your spirit comes and just fills her. God, I pray that when Megan feels low, God, I pray you put people around her that she can run to to build her up. God, I ask you to put people in her life that can build her up, not tear her down, God. And I just pray that when people do um, tear her down, God, I pray that that she won't take it personal, God. I pray that she just quickly um, gives that to you, Lord, and not holds it on. God, I pray that you heal her heart from any unforgiveness towards people hurting her. God, and I just I thank you for her life. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak to all depression, and I command it to go. Yeah. All depression, you must leave in the name of Jesus. All heaviness, get off Megan right now in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, and have your way in Megan's life. In Jesus' name. Father, I lift up Megan's mom. Father, I ask for your kingdom come. Your will be done in Megan's mom's life. Lord, I just ask for... Just all the all your plans and purpose in her life to come for. Um, yeah, and in Jesus' name, pass. Um, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that um, we your word, Father God, your word says that we are to cast all of our fears, all of our depression, all of our anxiety onto you. So, Father God, we just cast it all out of out of her, and Father God, that we just. Um, so that um, Megan and her family, when anything comes up against her, that they know and that they go into your word, Father God, and they cast everything. They command it to leave their body in the name of Jesus and that they will bring every thought captive to the obedience of you, Lord. So as soon as those fiery darts come up in their mind, that they're going to cast it out and rebuke it because they're going to know that that's not of you, Father God, because your word tells us that they are the head and not the tail, that they are above and not beneath. 
that your word tells us that we we are healed by this by the stripes of of jesus and father god so we just we just speak that over their lives and we command everything that comes from the, the enemy to leave their bodies in the name of jesus that they are healed by your stripes you yes, took that two thousand years ago on the cross when you when you when you did that for us you took everything and we just thank you lord for that and we just thank you for your word for your son jesus and we just thank you lord that they are receiving healing right now in the name of jesus that they are healed that they're delivered and we just thank you lord that they will know any time that that comes that they just can speak to it speak to the depression speak to to the bad foot speak to the anxiety did anything that comes that is not of the god you just you keep telling it to leave and you tell it that i'm the righteousness in christ jesus i am saved by by jesus and i am redeemed i'm restored i'm delivered and i'm healed and that's the only thing that i receive and that's what you that's what you have and and that you are his masterpiece and that you will not have none of that and we just thank you in jesus's name we pray this out amen thank you does the name Betty mean anything to you? No. Okay, that's fine. But whenever I was praying, I just heard that name. But I, I saw you coloring. And I saw this peace coming to you as you were coloring. And then I saw you flying a kite. And then I felt like the Lord said that your childhood, you didn't really get to enjoy too much. Just the childlike faith. Um, you were a caretaker and you took care of everybody and you didn't take care of yourself along the way. And um, there's been a heaviness on you. I feel like there's a self-rejection where you don't approve of yourself, where you get angry at yourself and you, you, you don't want to forgive yourself. And the Lord says to cast your cares on him because he loves you and he wants you to come to him like a child. He wants you to sit there and let your imagination flourish and, and just color. He created color and there's healing even in colors. And, um, you know, with you flying the kite, that's just a carefree act where you just go out and you don't have things to do. You could just enjoy the breeze blowing in your face and, and, and just letting life calm down a little bit. And I felt like there was a robbery of the women in your family where you've been stolen from. And um, you guys have had to be independent and you've had to do things and you had to be strong. Does any of that make sense to you? A lot of sense. Okay. And so the Lord hears your heart and he wants you to come to him like a child. And you can talk to him and you could say, Daddy, he is your father. And he, he wants you to just tell him the burdens that are tearing you up inside. And it's okay to say, it's not fair. It's okay to say that and get it out. You bottle things up inside and that's what's causing, it's like a, a pressure cooker. That's where the anxiety is coming because you can't take it anymore. It, it, you just, you can't take it anymore. And he wants you to release it. It's like you're carrying this baggage and it's like so heavy on your shoulders that you feel like you're being pushed down and you, you have no momentum to move forward. And I just hear him saying, trust me, my daughter. Trust me, my daughter. Trust me, my daughter. And he wants to go before you and he wants to be your covering. He wants to be your provider. He wants to be your healer. He wants you to draw close to him in a way you've never done before. And so, Father, I pray right now for Megan, God. Holy Spirit, I just pray you minister to her right now. In those places inside of her that are lonely, where she doesn't feel like she's worthy of 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 anything at times. And Lord, she's your daughter. She's wonderfully and fearfully made. She's beautiful. She's altogether lovely. She is your masterpiece. And Lord, you look upon her and you catch every tear that falls from her eyes and you know every hair on her head, God. Yes. And you delight in her. You sing over her. You love her. 
Father, I, really, I pray you release your everlasting, infinite, reckless love into her heart yes. right now. Yes. Holy yes. Spirit, just shower her with love. Let her feel your liquid love right now. Love covers all. Yes, Lord. Father, yes. I thank you. I thank you for Megan, God. And I thank you for her mother. And I thank you for her grandmother. And I pray for justice to be released, Father. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that you will make crooked places straight. Yes. That you will repair the breaches in these three generations, God. Yes, Lord. We also pray for healing in that grandmother's foot, I believe it was. Joanne. So we just speak resurrection life over her foot. I speak to any inflammation, any any infirmity, any trauma, anything that, uh, um, what else, Lord? Uh, affliction, I just command it all to go in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I just thank you for it. Uh, so I just say, be healed in the name of Jesus. And uh, yeah, yeah, I was gonna, um, can you, can you, um, can you renounce a couple things? Like just repeat after me. Okay. Okay, say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I repent. I repent. On behalf. On behalf. Of any family member. On any family member. Or myself. Or myself. To open the door. Open the door. To anxiety. To anxiety. And depression. And depression. And infirmity. And infirmity. I now break. I now break. Every stronghold. Every stronghold over my body. Over my body. That's linked to those things. That's linked to those things. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now I want you to say in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus. I renounce. I... Infirmity. Infirmity. I renounce. I renounce. Pain. Pain. I renounce. Renounce. Anxiety. Anxiety. Um, I renounce. I renounce. Fear. Fear. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, uh, there's something else. Oh, and I renounce depression. I renounce depression. Um, I renounce. I renounce. Self rejection. Self rejection. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, now I'm just going to speak life over you, okay, right now? So okay. in the name of Jesus, I, I, I speak to every unclean spirit that's hindering her. And I command everything that's unclean to come out. In the name of Jesus, all depression, all anxiety, all infirmity, all affliction come out in the name of Jesus. And I just speak life over her spirit, that she is whole by the blood of Jesus. I just plead the blood over her right now. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to come and fill her up. Fill every void. Fill every void in Jesus' name. Do you feel anything going on? Yeah. What's going on? I feel everything leaving. Amen. Praise Aww. God. Praise God. And Megan, I have a song for you from the Lord. Okay. You are so beautiful. To me, can't you see? You're everything I just long for. You're everything I need. You are so beautiful to me. He says you're beautiful. You're beautiful. And he created you. He created you for love, to love you and for you to love him in return. So I just release that over you in Jesus name. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Did you did Amen. you feel anything else that was uh stuck there or did it all go? It all went. Praise God. <laughs> Thank God. Hey. You're so loved. <laughs> and go get a coloring book and some crayons, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And you just know you're his masterpiece. You are. That's you. He loves you and you just lean on him. You lean on his word and you just meditate on his word day and night. And you just learn those and you just learn all those I am's and that's who you are. You are the righteousness in Christ Jesus.
You're everything that he says you are. Don't ever listen to what anybody else says about you. If anybody says anything negative about you, you don't ever receive that. And don't even give don't even give anything to it. Amen. Amen. Hey, well, thank you. It was a joy to pray for you. Thank it, you. It's such an honor. And um, if you if you have any other questions or need prayer, feel free to inbox Candy or me or um, you know. So I kind of have one more thing to say. Okay. Hey. Okay. Perfect. It's very hard for me to get this out. I know it's been years since this happened, but okay. I've been holding it for a long time, and I don't know why. I was in a bad domestic violence relationship for seven years and it's had its hold on me for a long time and I'm in therapy for it now, but it's still very hard for me to, I don't know, come to terms and relax and yeah, I just hey, really can, met anybody can, that could understand what I've been through. Right. Well, um, I, uh, it, what, what that person did do you, do you want back in here? Yeah. Okay. What that person did was completely uncalled for. Okay. Not completely uncalled for, but it, <laughs> Um, the Bible says that we, I know this sounds crazy, but we have to forgive others so we can be forgiven. And unforgiveness can, can hold a lot of junk. And unforgiveness is not like saying that you have to be best friends with that person. You don't even have to talk to that person. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and wanting that person to die. It's only hurting yourself. But somebody so, told me to forgive him, like not like go to his face and forgive him, but just say to myself that I forgave him. But it's like, well, a part of me says, okay, I forgave him, but why can't I, you know, move on? I mean, it's like, yeah. my is stuck. My heart's let go, but my brain is stuck. Right. It's well, there's trauma. trauma. Like, yeah. Have you renounced trauma from it? You were, you were abused. And that was almost like a, um, it probably it's like wounds in your spirit your so not your spirit your soul your soul wounds and it's almost like out of those soul wounds when you don't renounce the renounce the trauma that was done to you it's an injustice it leaves you stuck in that place so so what if we lead you in just a couple more prayers and then we'll, we'll go from there okay okay so first first say is an act of my will Okay. Act of my will. I choose. I choose. To forgive. To forgive. And then the person's name, you don't have to say it out loud, but just mumble it under your breath. Okay. For what they did and then say what they done to you. Just to yourself. You don't even have to show. It's just over your mouth, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I now. I now. Release that person. I release that person. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I release myself. I release myself. From him. <laughs> yes. Say, I renounce. I renounce. Every ungodly soul tie. Say that again. Every ungodly soul tie. Every on God's solely tie with that person. With that person. All right, now I'm just gonna pray real quick with that. In the name of Jesus, I break off every ungodly soul tie. In the name of Jesus, I command it to be broken off right now. Off in the name of Jesus. Off. Off. Now. All right. All right. Now I want you to say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I call back. I call back everything that I have given away, everything that I've given away back to my soul, back to my soul in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Okay. Say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 
I renounce. I renounce. Trauma. Trauma. I break every hold. I break every hold. Of trauma over my body. Every trauma over my body. Okay, now I'm just going to pray. All right, come Holy Spirit. Yeah, come, come Holy Spirit. I speak to trauma in our community to come up and come out. Out, right now. Yes. Out, right now. Thank Every you. bit of trauma, come yes. out. Yes. Leave her alone now. Yes. You must come out now. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Out. Yes. Out. Come up and come out. No manifestation. Just come out now. Out. And Holy Spirit, come and release your kingdom right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, you're so good. You're so good, Dad. Do you feel it? Did you feel it leave or do you feel it uh, struggling? It's struggling. Okay. Yeah, I see it in your Okay. Here. All right. So I want you to, um, in the count of three, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tell the girl and I want you to cough, okay? Okay. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three, out. <coughs> out. In the name of Jesus. <coughs> Okay. Um, do you still feel it there? A little bit. Okay. Every bit of trauma, you must go. Every bit of trauma, come out in the name of Jesus. No fighting. Come out. Come out. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Just let us know when it's completely released, okay? We're just going to keep praying for you. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. What's that? I said thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You, you're, so, it's so, you're so worthy. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for what you're doing. And we ask 100%, Father, by the blood of Jesus, I command every spirit that's unclean, that's afflicting her, to come out. Thank you. Right now. By the blood of Jesus, out in the name of Jesus. Right now, fire God, fire God, right now, burn it out, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Fire God, right now, burn it out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you're so worthy. What's going on? Do you what? What are you feeling? I'm okay. It's just. Are you a hundred percent? No, not quite. Okay. Well, what do you? Let's what, ask Holy Spirit. Holy, why don't you say Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? That needs to be revealed. That needs to be revealed. And, and see if Holy Spirit says anything to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What do you feel on you? Are you did, do you feel, like, did you get a thought? If not, it's okay, but what are you feeling? I'm feeling a little stressed about it. Okay, stress. Okay, um, all right, so I also, um, I, I want you to just, uh, could you could you repeat after me again? Yeah. Okay, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce. I renounce. Any perversion. Any perversion. That I inherited. That I inherited. Or I opened myself up to. Or that I opened up, opened myself up to. Okay, in the name, all right, now I'm going to sit. In the name of Jesus, I just speak to any perversion, God, right now. I just speak to perversion. I commit all perversion to come out. God, I thank you that you gave her the mind of Christ. All double-mindedness come out. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can I ask you something, Megan? Oh, yeah. What did you experience abuse at all when you were a child? Experience what? Abuse. No. Okay. Did your mom or grandma? No. Okay. 
That's good. That's I just awesome. wanted to make sure it wasn't generational too. Because a generational stronghold doesn't want to let go either. Mine was a relationship. So, yeah. I was in a relationship for seven years. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's so Father, I just I thank you for Megan. I thank you for moving all stress. I thank you that your burden is easy and your yoke is light. Father, I ask right now, you said your, your anointing comes to break the yoke. So, Father, I ask right now for your yoke to be upon Megan, to break any ungodly yoke. And, Father, I pray for your yoke to come upon her, which is easy and it's light. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Megan, the, the circumstances that happened around you, whether in the past or even today, that's not your identity. Your identity is who God sees when he looks at you, and he calls you beautiful. Yeah. He calls you beautiful. Yeah. And and so 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 when you wake up and those thoughts, those, those stooping, lying spirits that always come and speak death over us, speak life over. You you commit, you, not over that, but over yourself, and just, you know, take, like, like, like he's like, you know, take every thought captive under the obedience of Christ. When those stupid lying spirits speak something over you that's not of God, you know, all authority given to us, you have that authority. You just shut it down. So I want to encourage you with that. And, and um, yeah, if, if you have, even if you would want to meet with us sometime, uh, you know, and go through, like, if you feel like you have more whatever, um, you know, whatever, we're more than happy to just, you know, be here and love you and be your friend and whatnot. So. And I have one more thing too. Whenever we were praying, I just felt like many chains were breaking off of you. I felt like there's been chains on you. Yes. And Praise God. Yeah. Do you feel lighter at all? Yes, I do feel lighter. It's weird how you knew that. It's weird. Holy um, Spirit knows you. Jesus knows you. That's, you know, we only know in part and. And, I, you know, he knows you and he loves you. But I just wanted to, I want to sing this over you too because, you know, um, I'm hearing it. But there is, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. And he it's his name that breaks chains. And I just feel like he was saying, your chains are broken. Chains are broken. You are no longer bound in that area. You are his daughter. And as Daniel said, you get up in the morning and you say, Jesus, there's power in your name. And I thank you that I'm alive today. I thank you that my past is not going to hold me back anymore, God. And I thank you that I'm forgiven. For all that, that wasn't even my fault. Sometimes when we experience abuse, we blame ourselves. And I think that's where the self-rejection came from. You are blaming yourself for seven years where you permitted it not knowing. You know what I mean? You you yeah. didn't permit it, but yet you did. But yeah. And that's where you're beating yourself up. Yeah. yeah. And you, you can't do that. It's gone. You are forgiven under the blood. Chains are broken. No more. Yes. And you just... Look in the mirror and you say, I am altogether lovely. I am a daughter of God. And I'm forgiven. Just forgive yourself. Yeah. That's the hardest thing sometimes, just forgiving yourself. It's the truth. I appreciate it, guys, a lot. Well, we That's love you. And Jesus loves you. Amen. Thank you. And I love Jesus. You pick up those chains off the floor and you go throw them away. God bless you. <laughs> I definitely will. Amen. Hey, well, honestly, feel free to message us if you need to, okay? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. God bless you. Bless you, too. Uh, uh, bye. Oh, she's gone. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Stacy doesn't want to come on, but we still. That, yeah, that's my um, my cousin. Okay. That's definitely his first yeah. cousin. So she wants prayer, but she doesn't want to come on. Okay. I don't know if she's on now, but she. Um... Oh, she wants prayer for Eric. He's um, in the hospital. Eric's seriously ill. 
Okay. Thank you, Noreen. This is... All right. So, um, I'll just pray for Stacy and Eric. I guess Eric. Thank All right. God. Let's just praise God right now. Father, yeah, we just thank, thank you right you. now, Father. Thank you, Jesus. For what you're doing, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for touching, um... Megan. Megan, thank Lord, you. I thank you for, like, just having your way. And God, I just ask you to just continue to have your way in our life, God. And, and I just thank you for her. And, uh, yeah, I just ask you to bless her, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Sing songs of deliverance over her tonight, Lord. Yeah. Just completely minister to her. Yes, overhaul God. her with, with your goodness and your mercy and your grace and your love, mercy Father, in Jesus' name. Forever. So, yeah, Father, I uh, lift up my cousin, um, Stacy. And, uh, God, I just thank you for her life. And, uh, God, I just ask you to just continue to have your way in her life. I ask you to speak life over her, show her just your goodness over her, how much you love her, her value. Yeah. And uh, Father, I just thank you for her in my life. And um, yeah, and uh, what's her? Eric. So Father, I lift up Eric to you, God. God, I pray that your goodness washes over Eric. And God, I just ask that you, whatever the circumstances, I don't know, but I ask whether it needs healing, God, I ask you to heal, the, heal him. Whether he needs deliver, God, I ask you to deliver him. God, I just, whatever he needs, you know, God, I just ask you to meet his need wherever he is, where he's at, God. And I pray that he doesn't have to feel like he has to be perfect to come to you, Lord. I just pray that you just, just meet him where he's at and just have your way in, in, in the whole circumstance, whatever it looks like, in Jesus' name. Amen. And I thank you for the heart of compassion on Stacy, Lord. Yeah. I just pray, yeah. Father God, that you cover her in that, Lord, and teach her how to moon in that gift, Father, where she's just she she has a gift of mercy, Father. And I just thank you for um, thank you, letting Lord. her have a reality and a knowing of who she is and her strengths, God. There's so many strengths in her, Father. So I just thank you for her life, and I just pray that you continue to minister to her, Father, by yes, your Lord. spirit, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, if there's anyone else, uh, if you could, if you're watching this, could you please, um, you don't have to, but if you could share it, uh, that would open up the doors for more people to watch and uh, to get more people in here to pray uh, for. So if there's anyone else on here, um, Please share, and if there's anyone else that wants prayer, um, comment. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah, in the meantime, this is awesome. So, yes, yes. Our special guest had to go get her, her yeah. kiddos. Yeah. Like, <laughs> She'll be back. Where'd you go? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not she will be back. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. Thank you all again so much. I feel so much better and f freed. And the chains that have been holding me back from relaxing, for, was that right? Mm -hmm. From relaxing and living and being happy. And I feel so much better that I got it out and I feel a breath of fresh air. It just was awful holding it in for, the long, for this long. That relationship was awful. And yeah, it meant so much to be that you guys listened. Yes, it's an honor. It is an honor. It's and such an honor. Megan, thank you. You know, it, it is scary when you open up about things. Oh my gosh, there's you know, things the, that I open up, I'm like, but there is, there's freedom. You and by share. the word of your testimony and the yeah. blood of the Lamb, you overcome. And see, by your testimony, as you open up, you're going to get freer and freer over in that. And there's other, there's going to be other people that, yeah. because your testimony, they're going to be able to be set free. Yeah. So I'm proud of you. You were brave by opening up. It's yeah. scary to do that. So yay, God, that was amazing. Mm. Yeah. That Hi, awesome. Brian. How are you doing, sir? <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah, so anybody else would you like? Okay. Hi, Candy. Stephanie. Hey, girlfriend. How are you? You want to come on and, and us pray for you? We'll, we'll invite you and you can come up on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just going to wait 10 Stephanie seconds. was my BFF since like fourth grade. For real. For real. Doing okay. You need some fire? fire? Amen. Well, hey, I like to release some fire. Do it. Well, Father, I pray right now for Brian, God. I pray for us too. Holy Spirit, 
Let your fire fall. Yes, Lord. We pray for a fresh outpouring of your consuming fire, God, your love, your passion, your presence. Holy Spirit, just pour upon us, God, your presence. Yes. Your presence. Oh. Father, I thank you that you are an all-consuming fire, God, and I thank you that your spirit, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, lives inside us. God, I just pray that you stir up Brian right now, Lord. Father, I pray your spirit to breathe a freshness over him. Let that fire just engulf in flame, Lord. And I pray for, I pray in the name of Jesus for oil, fresh oil. Yeah. God, right now that the, the fire will not be burning from the wick. But I pray for the oil come. Come, Holy Spirit, and release oil for Brian right now in the name of Jesus. And Fresh as a fire. prophetic act, I'm going to just blow on the embers of your heart. We're yes, going to blow Lord. on those embers. Yes, Lord. Father, I, I just thank yes, you for Brian. Lord. And I feel like there's been a few setbacks that have caused a couple disappointments for you, Brian. And the Lord says... They ain't nothing but a thing. <laughs> Just keep looking to me. Keep trusting in me. And these are going to strengthen you even though they feel like they've set you back. Because he is a supernatural suddenly God. So I pray right now for Brian. For a suddenly God. A suddenly. Yes, where he's been feeling set back. God, there are, there's going to be a suddenly in Jesus' name. Provision. <laughs> yes. Provision for the vision. Yes. And we pray that that discouragement goes now in Jesus' name. Hope deferred makes the heart grow weary. So I just thank you for that fresh fire, that fresh vision, that fresh oil, and that fresh wine. And an outburst of your joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes, amen. Megan writes, there was more, but I would private message you. And we would love yes, to respond. Yes, please do. Um, yeah. And Brian said a lot. So right on Amen. for the word Amen. and praise God and God is good he's so good that's cool he's so good praise God he's so good I see for you Brian I see like these these um, obstacles in the middle of your like journey and it's almost like it, okay I'm seeing a weird picture but it's it's like pioneering like you're pioneering but when you're pioneering like the pioneers had these wagon wheels that were wooden and when they broke, they they were broke, and and so I feel like there's been these obstacles where these pioneer wagon wheels have been held up. Marie hopped on, and Sorry. God is going to change your flat tire, <laughs> and He is gonna. You're not gonna just have to go around it. He's gonna take you over it. <laughs> you're gonna speak to that mountain, and it is gonna get up and throw itself into the sea in Jesus' name. Hi, Candy. Hi, Marie. <laughs> you know, I was in the middle of a serious prayer. <laughs> Sorry. I see. Squirrel. <laughs> Sorry, my Love bad. you, Marie. Miss you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> I love you guys. Love you. What's going on in Washington? your world? Well, I was going to say is the it, state, but I'm like, no. California. No, that's California. Okay, that's right. California. It's gotten really cold here in PA, and I'm it's not liking too it much. Cold. I'm like, not happy. But it, um, sorry, I'm complaining. I'm not complaining. I just don't like the cold. <laughs> That's just saying. Uh, you can call it complaining. <laughs> yeah, I got to, I was in Florida two weeks ago, and, and that was nice. It was like 90 degrees every day, so it was like. Amazing. Yeah. Now it's like 40. Amazing. How cold? Send it here. What how, is the temperature? How, yeah, what's the temperature there in, in the, where you're at? Roughly. Roughly. During, r r oh, it's only at a five. <laughs> during the day. During the day. Um, Nothing's like Kenya, where you just like sweat pores. Yeah. <laughs> and then they were cold. <laughs> they got jackets on. 68-ish. That's beautiful, 68-ish. It's like 68. What did Megan say? We also need prayer for our Tahoe to be fixed and drivable. A drunk driver hit it parked at the shop to get it worked on. But it's been in the 90s. Wow. So that's, okay. Megan. So, um, yeah, I just, um, what would that be? That would be... Um, Devours, devouring finances. And... 
Hmm. Yeah, so Father, every every scheme of the enemy that's on Megan, like I just pray every every stronghold to be broken, that that uh, I just pray for poverty to break off Megan, God, and I just pray Spare lack. Yes, Bam. lack and all lack to go, and I just pray that you provide everything according to your riches in Jesus' name. Yeah, new V like I uh I'll give you a quick testimony of what God did for me for a vehicle. Bam. Um, I was at a meeting. It was uh, a ministry that I go to. And um, I go to this, like, it's called Sunburn. And the speaker said, if anyone needs a vehicle, stand up. Or no, he said, if anyone received a car blessing, stand up. They stood up. He goes, I want the people that need a car that that need a car so stand up so I, I stood up now to be honest I didn't need a car but I wanted a car and there was a few people that stood up and he prayed for you know the people prayed for the people that needed a car well then a week later like a week and a half later uh, it was a Sunday I was dry I went to church and then I went off to eat and then I was gonna go to another church well on my way to another church the traffic was flowing and I hit the guy in front of me and as I hit the guy in front of me, like the traffic's still moving, and I, I pull like I go to pull over, the guy that I hit just keeps driving. So I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking like honestly in my head, I'm like, praise God, because I only had liability on my car. So if if you know, I which I've been more than happy, but I would have had to pay out my insurance would have to pay out and I would have been screwed with a broken car. So long story short, okay, so that guy keeps driving, I pull over and all of a sudden, within like three minutes as I'm sitting there, a tow truck just appears. He gets out of the car. He says, do you need any help? And I'm like, um, uh, I don't think so. He gave me his card. I tried driving a block away and my car shut down. So I quickly called him up. He drove to my car. He loaded my car up. Took all, We get to his place. He loads up like he helps me load up his car. He drives me home. He didn't give me a price. I'm thinking, oh my God, this is going to be so expensive. Um, my friend Kevin put out a, pay, a, a, fo, uh, a post on Facebook. And another friend uh, saw that post. and got, He said that God told him that he was supposed to give his car away. He saw Kevin's post and prayed about it and said, yes, we're supposed to. So I wrecked my car on Sunday. By Tuesday, I was told I was getting a new car. By Thursday, I was driving it. Hmm. That's a sudden light. <laughs> yeah, that's a sudden light. Bam. So I just want to pray. Father, I ask that you release car finances, blessing, whatever, whatever you have um, for <laughs> Megan, Lord. And anyone else, Lord, I just ask for your provision in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, okay. Whoop, whoop. And Lord, we pray that you release some cool air into and bring the hot air to Marie's us. world. In Jesus name. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, God's good. So, what's up? So I'm gonna do a plug. This weekend is the retreat, and plug. Amy Reardon is speaking. <laughs> Bam, and and Noreen Adams and her crew have her team have just put this beautiful thing together it's going to be exciting and i'm leading worship and so yay god so rad yeah yeah i love i love the lingo i know I love it. So rad. <laughs> my son would love that he says everything's gnarly gnarly <laughs> so gnarly i'm like okay everything's dope these days <laughs> now like my mom my mom calls dope marijuana i'm like wow that's not Dope today is not good. <laughs> but anyhow. I'm confused. Don't people go, that's so dope. Yes, but that there's that. But then actually dope is heroin. So uh, it's oh, like. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I was. Hugs back to you. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So now what? I know, right? Okay, so you want to go? Or do you, do you want to do something else? Anyone want to share? <laughs> Anybody want to come on and say hi to us? How about Marie? You want to come on? Marie? You know you want to. We'll I think you should. I should pray for you, Marie. <laughs> It'd be so fun. It'd be so rad. <laughs> I think you have to. Okay. Sure! Yes! <laughs> gnarly. <laughs> so gnarly. <laughs> Let's see if we can figure this out. Okay.
He's gonna invite you. I'm gonna try. Okay, Marie. Invite. Inviting Marie. I gotta put on my glasses so I can see her. Right. <laughs> so far away. <laughs> We're inviting you, Marie. I don't know how this all works, but does it come up on your screen? I Connecting. Oh, oh my gosh, let me let me get in like better lighting. How is it? <laughs> <laughs> how are you, girl? I'm good. How are you? It's so good. You're so beautiful. Oh my gosh, you guys are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seriously. I hear her from from work, but. <laughs> This is like, it has, it has me like doing like weird stuff with my phone. I've never done this. Hi! I gave you a big hug. I know. I know. For real. <laughs> I wish you could just be there that easy. That would be so great. Right? Oh my God. Just like a snap. Let's just translate to her. Bam. Right. <laughs> hey, that's what, you know, Jesus did that. There, so I want to be like that. Like, that's right. And then we'll be on that side of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Ooh, I just want to see you guys. <laughs> that would be awesome. So awesome. So what's up? Tell me what's new. Uh, what's new? Um, well, I'm raising money to go to Africa again. Are you really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, so exciting. When are you going? Yeah. Um, are you going with, go with Peter and Lori? Well, just Peter, and I guess there's um, there's eight guys all together. So uh -huh. it's just young guys or younger guy, you know, and there's eight guys. So, so it's going to be a little more stretching, I think, because there's going to be yeah. more of a requirement, but not, you know what I mean? There's more of a go do it, you know, Very cool. but I, I oh still, miss, hang on real I quick. I still miss right back. I'll be right back. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> oh, what's she going to get? <laughs> Hi, Rocky. Hi. How are you? Oh, oh somebody at her door. We have Marie, and Marie went to oh. answer her door. I think her door was knocked. Somebody was knocking on her door. It's the postman. Aren't they three hours behind? So what time is it there? Whatever time is it now? <laughs> so it's five o'clock there. No? Eight, yeah. Seven, six, it's five, five o'clock. Yeah, I'm back. Hey. hey. Knock three times. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just couldn't cook tonight. I love to cook, but I just yeah. couldn't do it tonight. Tonight it was it was a it was a day. <laughs> nice. Marie, I miss you. When are we going on another mission trip? Where are we going? I know, we have to go. Like the Lord's really been putting it on my heart. Seriously. I don't know about you guys, but my heart is aching, aching for the next place. And I'm like, Lord, where do you want me? And and it's just been this at you know, this you know, you you guys know, okay, when you when you're praying and you and you and you're just like travailing in your spirit and you're like, Lord, where do you want me next? And and there's and there's there's silence and it's just kind of in that place and it's and there's and there's peace in that place, but there's there's also this this longing and this aching for um for being someplace, but you don't know where that place is. And right. And so that's, it's, it's been a, it's been a season. It's been a, it's been a yeah. season of, of travail for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and that's never a fun place, but it's a good place, but it's not it, a fun it, place. It's like, it's like a birthing place, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Candy, Candy was talking to me. I, I think she, we were just talking actually, even like, was it today that she's like longing to go on another mission? I am trip? so ready. Me too. I am so ready. So I was, I was seeing a few that like with Georgie and, and Winnie, they have two coming oh, yeah. up. Like, they really wear her. Israel in February. Uh -huh. And then they have Mexico. It's a four day one wow. where they go into the dumps and they set, they last year they set up tables, like intimate settings, you know, with yeah. white tablecloths and fresh flowers and just oh, loved. Oh my goodness. Loved. Yes. Isn't that like, uh, come on, let's go. Yes. Oh, I'm so ready. <laughs> Love so I'm just praying God, pray, just send the finances, you know, like with Kenya, yeah. God just worked that so all out yeah. and you know that, you know, you're there, you know, right. you know, that, you know, that he's done that. So I'm just believing it's coming again soon. 
And I wish I wish we could all go together. I want to be with you there. I would love it. I want to be with you. I miss ministering with you. I miss worshiping with you. My goodness, worship was Thank so you. extravagant. Seriously, we had some pretty good uh, good times. Like, I just remember being in the hotel and being loud, and then Peter Young and us. <laughs> And Peter was so gracious to us. You he know? is so <laughs> gracious. But it was just like we were so filled with everything that God had done, you know. <laughs> and that That's that time in worship was just so sweet and it was it was pure and it was oh my gosh, I miss that. I really, really miss that a lot. I do. Yeah. yeah. Our team was amazing. Yeah. Our team is is it was, amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It is. <laughs> For real. <laughs> well, let's pray for Marie so she I, can go eat her food while it's still hot. Oh my okay. gosh. <laughs> so, Father, we just thank you for the food that Marie's about to eat. <laughs> no. <laughs> Father, I just bless Marie. <laughs> Father, I just thank you for Marie, Lord. I thank you for her as a sister. God, I ask you to just continue to lead her by your spirit, God. Show her where you want her day in, day out. Lord, I pray that you open up the doors for her to go on the next missions trip, God. And God, I pray that it won't be just a thing that she wants to do, but a, God, a place that she knows that she knows that you're sending her. God, I thank you that you do send her. You send her by just saying go by your word, Lord. And I just pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you just continue to... Um, overwhelm her with your goodness. God, I pray that you just continue to just give her like little, little, little charms here and there. Just like those little moments of just knowing how good you are and just how real you are. God, I just pray for more of those, just like you've done for me, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that you just continue to put people in her life around where she lives, Lord, that can build her up and encourage her and just like vice versa. God, I pray that you put people in her life that she can disciple, Lord. Um, that she can raise up, Lord. And I just thank you that the same spirit that rose Christ lives inside of her, God. I thank you for the powerhouse that she is, Lord. I thank you for the boldness that she carries, Lord. And God, I just I just thank you for her. And I ask you to bless her. And uh, Lord, as for your kingdom come, your will be done in her life. In uh, Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, I just thank you. I see this box for you, Marie. And I feel like you felt like you've been in a box. And in that box, it's been tight and confining. But in the, con the, the confinement, there's been that beautiful presence with you and the Lord. And you and him have been in this place of very close proximity. And I see you coming up out of that box. And it's like a cardboard box. And as you're coming up out of that box, now it's being wrapped with a big red bow because it's a gift. The place of your intimacy and your confinement where you felt like you were in a box is becoming a gift to all those around you because it is your relationship with the Lord that's going to pour out his presence, your relationship with him, your intimacy with him is going to be gifts to everybody around you. And I just see God just bringing new friends into your life where you're going to be able to, to just minister his love and his light. And um, you are a gift to everybody around you and I and I saw him doing something with your job I don't know if he's changing it but there's changes with your job and so um it's good everything's good it's yeah. gonna you're a gift <laughs> Aww, thank you you guys are a gift I'm over you guys as well um yay awesome. thank awesome. you <laughs> excuse me lord god I, I thank you for candy and daniel I thank you for the preciousness of, of, of who they are. They are so precious to me and I love them dearly, Lord God. And, and Lord, I know that, that they are even so much more immensely precious to you, Lord God. So I pray that you would just cover them, that you would fill them, Lord, overflowing, Lord God. And I, and I thank you. I thank you for, for their purpose, for, for what you've deposited in them, Lord God. I pray that you would just continue to just continue to work in them, to to, to work through them, Lord God, to, to continue to use them as your mouthpieces, Lord. I pray that you would just bless their coming and their going. I pray that you would open up new amazing doors for them. I feel like this is a season of just extravagance 
just huge extravagance for, for the both of them. I declare and decree in the mighty name of Jesus that nothing will stop you that nothing will, will, will come against you, that, that, that everything that you touch will be for the glory of God. You, Lord, Jesus. I thank you. I thank you for, um, for their encouragement. I thank you for, for what they represent. I thank you for where they've walked, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, for using them so mightily. And I love them so dearly. I love you both so much. I hope you know that. I hope that comes through. I love you. you are seriously my family. And I'm, I'm so thankful for you. So thankful for you. Aww. I feel that way too, Marie. I love you too. And you are my family too. And I miss you. I miss I'm so ready to too. come visit you. And you can come visit me anytime. <laughs> yes. I'm, we're going to make it happen. We are. We are. Amen. For sure. That would be awesome. <laughs> thank you for the beautiful prayer. You're welcome. Yes. Thank you. I love you. Ah, I love you guys love too. You. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> do you need to turn it off or to shake it? Uh, hey. We're okay. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> okay. Are we leaving? Um. Or you want to keep? Do you keep... want to go back on or are we done? We can go back. Okay. I totally get okay. what we were doing. Hi. Say hi. That's Daniel. Hi. I'm Daniel. What's Great, your name? You. How How was it? Did you get lost candy? Yeah. Tell them what um, your names are. Um, me and that's Bree. Hi. Hi. <laughs> your cheeks are cold. Is it yeah. cold outside? Yeah. Oh my god. I, bags. Really? Filled to the max. Really? You guys yeah. want to share some of your candy with them, please? <laughs> yeah. Grab yeah. right, the bags so that they can um, have. <laughs> Have some candy. Brady, go get your bag. Terry's watching. Hi, Terry. Is he still there? I don't know. And oh. Nicole. Hey, Nicole. You want to see how cool this is? Go ahead. You want to sit? You can come sit. Yeah. And watch. <laughs> we have more guests, too. Uh, yeah. Here I'm going to um, fix sit? the camera. Come in here. Okay. You can come in here. You can go, go to the middle. Go in there by mom. <laughs> you guys want to see? Uh -huh. You're on Facebook Live. <gasps> No you're way. on TV. Yeah, you're on TV. You're you guys want to pray for anybody? You can pray for people too if you want. Um, There's nothing like childlike faith. That's right. For real. What would you like to say to people? What do you What do you think? Uh, what What does Jesus do for us? Um, he heals us. Heals us. He prays over us. Yeah. We cover with what? What do we cover everybody every day with? The blood. Amen. The blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you want to tell people that you pray for them and cover them with the blood of Jesus? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sit by you, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Move over so candy bar and you can have some. So you guys have a nice family. <laughs> you have a lot of candy. I think you guys have a nice family. <laughs> Thank you. So Terry said hi. Tell Terry hi. Say hi, Terry. Brady, hi, say hi. Terry. Hi, Terry. <laughs> Terry is an awesome guy. He he like loves Jesus and he ministers and he does mission trips and yeah. Oh hi Terry. I went to um, Honduras with Terry. It was amazing. Um, oh, do you want to go to another country? When the first time I ever I prayed for a woman's wrist and as I felt as I prayed for her, I felt her bones go back into place. Isn't and that... she started crying and she could lift up a bucket and it was just like wow God is so real. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Wow. He said, nice doggy. Nice doggy. <laughs> nice doggy. That's, that's Cooper Bear. That's, that's Cooper. Cooper. I'm thinking he's doing slang, you know. It's like, whoop. Oh, there's really a doggy there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Cooper wants to get in the video. Mom, how can you get this on TV? Oh, is he live? I'd like to. Mom, how is he coming? Or, uh, I'm going to invite him. Oh, Terry, come on. We want to say hi to you. Mom. Mom, why can't, um, why can't hey, Mom, I thought it was like, supposed to go upstairs. How can they get us to go for a little bit? How can, like, they get us to go on TV? On, on, well, this is on Facebook. Mm. So we're live on, on Candy Bar's, um, Oh, well, I think it's Facebook Daniel's. Page. Oh. Or I Daniel, shared it. Is this, oh. I've never been on There's the Terry. <laughs> Say hi to Terry. How are you doing? Hi, Terry. <laughs> Hello there. How are you doing? What are you guys doing? Hi. He they said, just, what, they what just got doing? back. They just, were out. You're out collecting Damn, candy. Baby. Out collecting yeah. candy. Were you oh, trick, yeah. trick yeah. or treating? Yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah. did you do any tricks? No. No. 
No, they just said the good old fashioned trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said trick or treat. All treats, no tricks, huh? <laughs> yeah. So we were, how are you doing? What's, what's up in your world, man? Oh, my goodness. Um, just came back from Nicaragua about three weeks ago, four weeks ago now. <clears throat> and wow. we're, we're going to be planting three churches. Can you believe it? Amazing. We got, nice. We have a group down there that was watching me on Facebook and said, we need your ministry. Can you come down? And I said, well, we'll come down and we'll check it out. And one thing turned into another. And now we're going to, we're helping three, three different pastors get established down there. They want to be, they want to be like Jesus. How about that? Wow. That's amazing. And do the wow. things that Jesus did. You know, the, the first, one of the most amazing things that happened was when we got off the plane in, in Managua, um, we went to someone's house to pray for them. And the lady had, um, I think it's called encephalitis, which is water on the brain. Wow. And she had had four, three or four brain surgeries already. We prayed for her, felt the presence of God. But, you know, with something like that, you just never know. And last week, I got right. a, a, an email from them saying that they had gone back to the doctors. They had an MRI done. And the doctor said she has no more no more issues. She's perfect. Amen. Wow. Can you believe that? God is good. I do believe that. Oh, yeah, I do believe that. <laughs> God sure. is good. He's so, so good. good. Wow. How long were you there? We were only there for a week. We were just going on Amazing. an exploratory mission to see what God was doing and you know, if you wanted us to be a part of it, and that's what happened. That was just the first, that happened in the first hour we were there. It was crazy. Amen. So, the first hour. Yeah. See, that's that's why the Lord uh, used you to go over there. They needed her to be healed. Amen. 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 He used you. Awesome. So we got to, got to minister in some uh, apostolic church and Assembly of God church and a bunch of other churches, and we're going to go back. That is awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's exciting. How long did it take you to get there? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I got to find a new airline. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? We, How long was it? it? Well, going down, it took like about 12 hours because you had to fly from Pittsburgh to, uh, we went Pittsburgh to Atlanta, Atlanta to Mexico City, and then we had a layover in Mexico City and then to Managua. So we got in, or wow. we left, I left in the morning around six in the morning. We got to Managua around six at night. And then coming back, we had to stay overnight. We had a nine hour layover in Mexico City coming back. But the, the good news of that was the, the airline ticket was only like $375. Well, there you wow. go, man. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. But I think if that's you good. pay more money, you can go in two jumps instead of three. Yeah. Wow. wow. Keep me in mind, Terry. I'm getting a love for the nations. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're more than welcome. You know, I, I, I'm really open to taking whoever has a heart to do that, because, yeah. um, you know, I think if you're willing to step out and and do that in faith, God, God will use you. He'll use anyone if they're willing mm -hmm. to do that, because He loves it. those people. And he wants that's to right. demonstrate that's his right. love to them. So it doesn't matter that's who it. you are. If you have a heart for that, God will use you. And Amen. it's the same way here. You know, if you step out of the boat, you know, okay. you step out Amen. of the boat, God will use you. Amen. You've got to do that. Yeah. I mean, for those who are listening or watching, I'm just trying to encourage others to do the yes. thing. Yeah. I definitely, as my kids get older, I definitely want us to go on mission trips all the time. That, that is definitely something that I have just such a, like I've never done it yet. And I right. definitely want to do that. I definitely want to see people healed and laying hands on people and praying in the spirit and, and just seeing, you know, just the manifestation of the Lord, you know, healing people. And so I, I just, I can't wait to see that. I have not been able, I haven't. It's um, amazing. If you've, if you've seen it or experienced it here, it's like on steroids when you go out into the mission field. <laughs> See, I haven't, I haven't, like I haven't experienced it yet, except, well, you except, will. For my, except for my, not yet, I'm, not will. yet, but I mean, I definitely had, um, um, 
an experience to where I was supernaturally healed. I, I had sepsis and I was in the hospital. I was deathly ill and I felt my body shutting down to where I was going to take my last breath. And all of a sudden it was like a bolt of lightning came through my body and just wow. jolted me for that bit. And when I read Kenneth Hagen's book, I didn't see, I didn't know any of this. Like I'm still a baby Christian. I, I, um, gave my life to Christ in 2011. So, you know, I just started learning more of this over the years and stuff and listening to different sermons and different, you know, CDs and stuff like that of people yeah. and just hearing people's testimonies. But I know I definitely experienced it firsthand. And I was, I was like, I, I didn't, I, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't until when I read that book, I, I, I like almost dropped the book. Cause I didn't know that that like, that is what was happened to me. I couldn't explain it to people. I was like, it was, I felt electric come through wow. my body. Yeah. Did I, Resurrection is that, power. Is that what that is? I mean, cause I mean, what, what it, what is that? Ask Terry. Uh, uh, Terry. Well, it's the presence of God that's touching you. It's his kingdom breaking through into our world. You know, Jesus said, pray this way, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Well, when his kingdom is present, his presence is here. He rules and he reigns and things come back into the order in which he designed it to be. And that was for us to be healthy and whole, okay? And that's, right. why his, that's what happened. His kingdom broke through into your life, into your, into your being, and changed things the way they were supposed to be. That's what happened. Either somebody, yeah, because... somebody was praying for you or... You know, you... Oh, they were. I, I did because that, yeah. that um, I had a lady, I had people praying for me. There was a pastor that came and wouldn't come into the room because they felt the presence of evil spirits. And I knew that there was something going on, but I was yeah. still very new to this. This was going, this was three years ago. Terry would have went in. Uh, and, <laughs> and then I had two other um, ladies yeah, that came and, um, and laid hands on me and stuff and just started saying Jesus and started touching my body and stuff like that. That was after, so that was that Monday. So that experience that I had was that Saturday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and a lady said to me, she goes, I was at church and I was praying for you and stuff like that. And what happened was, um, I was in the bed and stuff like that. And I, so I, I just, I felt, like I said, I felt my body, it, like my, it, it was like something was, it was like my whole body was starting to shut down. I couldn't even move, wow. but I, my mind was like, I, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to take my last breath. And yeah. I, and, um, wow. and then all of a sudden it was like. Woof, came through my body and I felt it come through my neck and I like was able to get up out of the bed. I went into the bathroom, fell on the floor and was able to pull the string. And then there was like, like five doctors and nurses that came and, you know, running into the room and stuff, got me up. And then I was in the hospital. So when I went and got all the blood tests done, so this doctor was like, um, so I went to, I checked myself out of the hospital because they were just thinking I was, I was, something was wrong with me, but nobody was testing me for anything. They just were leaving me basically to die. Nobody tested me for anything. I was taking an ambulance, barely breathing, kept passing out, but they were thinking that I was just like having a nervous breakdown or schizophrenia. They were just wanting to put me in a loony bin and I knew something physically was wrong with me. So I checked myself out of the hospital, went to the regular doctors and when I went and she took 17 vials of blood, she, this lady was crying when I went back to the doctor's office for the second time of meeting her, N met her first twice in my life, go back to the doctor's office. And she's like, I, I, I can't even believe you're alive. She's like, you have no idea how bad you were fighting for your life in there. I said, I knew something was wrong. I said, I knew something was wrong. I said, she's like, your cortisol, which is your fight or flight syndrome, like you're, you're that, uh, you know, that you, you're either fighting or flight. She's like, it didn't even register on the charts. That's how high it was. It was off of the charts, like, like, like a five where you should be like at one something. She's like, you have no idea how lucky you are to be alive. And I went on and found a website on sepsis and the majority of the people, most people died. Wow. Wow. So that's why I know I was definitely supernaturally yeah. like, like jolted out of that bed. And then when, like I said, when I read Kenneth Hagen's book for my Bible study this past semester, I was blown away. 
I, that's yeah. when I was like, oh, wow. <sighs> so that was my experience. Terry, did you see anything like that? Did you have people on their deathbed and you prayed and they were resurrected? We had, a, we had one young child that actually, um, in the middle of the service, uh, the lady started screaming, a bunch of them started screaming because the baby wasn't breathing anymore. We just the you know, baby wasn't breathing. The baby was well, baby. I mean, like a a, a two year old, a year and a half, something like that. Oh, and we uh, instantly, you know, started to pray for the child. And actually, I was impressed as I was praying to pray against the spirit of death. And as we yeah. did that, you know, the the pastor then took the the child, and I could tell that uh, he was okay because he started to move. And I said, I don't know what's going on, but uh, I think he's okay. That was that's probably the closest that I've come to something like that. But you know, there's a lot of times there's um, there are spirits that are associated with a lot of the illnesses that we have, and people don't realize it. You know, they think it right. they're just sick, or you know, um, I got something that I picked up from somewhere. But the enemy is out there to rob, steal, destroy, and kill. And um, sometimes we get these things in our lives from different you know, different places, we don't realize w how we let the enemy into our lives and it affects us physically. Right. Uh, That's right. You remember when we were in, uh, at, at Pastor Santos's church in Chaloma, witchcraft, we had, cause there's a lot oh, of yeah. that around. Yeah, absolutely. Remember that? And we prayed for her yep. two nights in a row. We were there for three or four nights in a row. And um, she came back, I think it was at the last night, Daniel, and, and um, said that she had gotten set free. And you could tell, you could see it in her face. Her countenance had changed. And her whole yeah, being. absolutely. So was the, that the girl that said she had demons in her hand? Yes, that's the one. Yeah. The one, yeah. And yeah, so. She, um, she came every day to get prayer. And yeah. the last day she came to me, and I'm like, I don't want to pray for you, you know. Just, God this, her. just this past winter, last December, actually, I was talking with a young woman from Costa Rica, and um, she fed me for some reason because there was uh, some others that she knew who I was friends with from Honduras. And, so, and by the yeah. way, hi, Honduras. Hola, because I can see Hola. there's some people on. <laughs> we got people checking in here from Honduras. Uh, oh, do we? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Jasmine, Roberta. My dad. My dad. <laughs> <laughs> so um, where was I? Oh, the Costa Rica girl. So we were just chatting on Facebook. And she said, uh, I said, how you doing? She said, oh, I'm doing good. You know, I'm fine. All except for recently, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I said, uh, is there any of that history of that in your family? She said, yeah, my mother had it and my aunt had it. They both died from it, but it's okay. And I was like, no, that's not okay. That's not okay. Can I call you? She was bilingual. So I called her on Facebook and was. I said, let me pray for you. She said, all right. Prayed for her. And, you know, just a couple minutes, you know, the same stuff I always do. And it's, you know, come Holy Spirit, your kingdom come, blah, blah, blah. And nothing. She was, there was no, nothing. On, uh, she wouldn't say anything. I said, Catherine, are you okay? No answer. Catherine, are you there? No answer. And then all of a sudden she's like, I can't talk. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe, you know, I offended her. I didn't know what happened. So I right, said, right. I'll, ca I'll catch up with you later. That was last December. Okay. I'd never been to Costa Rica, but I prayed for this woman. I go to Costa Rica at the end of February. I'm there, and she's following me on Facebook. She comes, she ca contacts me and says, where are you? So I told her where I was. She came the last night we were there to tell me she had been to the doctors that week, and the doctors are now confused because they can't find any more cancer in her body. Praise God. Wow. Now, what I did when I prayed for her, I broke off of her spirits of, you know, cancer, that she might have inherited from her aunt, from her mother, or wherever it might have come from, and just canceled that. You know how you guys know how to do it. But what I'm saying is, there are a lot of times we don't realize we inherit these things or we pick up these things, and there's a spiritual right. element to them. 
you know. In Ephesians, it says, where well, it's not flesh and blood that we fight against, but principalities and powers, you know. Well, where do they come from? They're not, they don't come from God. And those are the kind of things when you recognize them, you just break them, you pray off, you know, and get, get them out in the name of Jesus. And, and it's up to him, you know, what happens. It's not me. I don't do it. You know what I mean? But That's right. it's just fun to be a part of what God's doing. And, you know, I would just share one other thing with you. You know, um, this all started for me about four and a half, five years ago. God put on my heart the Spanish-speaking community. And I didn't know what that meant. I thought maybe I'm supposed to learn Spanish or something, you know. And then probably within a couple months, Kevin called me, you guys, you know, Kevin Reardon. He called me and said, Terry, I got a, uh, an invitation to go to on a mission trip to Honduras, but I told him I wouldn't go unless you come. What do you think about that? I said, that sounds Spanish to me. Let's do it. <laughs> 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 and so I went. And God opened the doors, and it's been crazy, crazy, amazingly crazy. And after having been there and seeing what God was doing and just being a part of it, God spoke to me and said, I just want you to keep doing this. Bring, train people, bring them down, let them experience what I'm doing, and they can bring it back with them. They'll catch the fire, and they'll come back and bring it with them. And so that's all I've been doing. You asked me earlier, you know, what's going on, and, that's yeah. kind of what I'm still up to, you know. That's so good. Where all have you gone so far, Terry? Well, since then, I've been to uh, Honduras nine times, Costa Rica once, and Nicaragua now. I've been to China a few times earlier, um, and South Africa, but um, pretty much, you know, wow. Central America lately. That seems where, you know, God put the, you know, the food on my plate. So that's what I'm eating. <laughs> that's amazing. So what was China like? I mean, like, because they have like an underground church. How was how yep. being a missionary there? It is, it is totally, I mean, the real church is underground. Okay. They have what they call state sponsored churches or the cell church, or I forget what it's called now. There's a name for it, but they oversee you, you know, what you're doing and even examine what you're going to speak about before you speak about it, okay? Wow. But the big, the main church and the true Christians are all underground. You won't, you know, you won't find them just walking around unless you're talking to somebody. So when I went, I went with a friend of mine who's been there, uh, Todd Rosenwald. He's been there for like 14 years now, speaks the language fluently. And um, I went over with him. And he took us to the places that he knew. We'd go up into the mountains and drive around and hide in the woods during the day. And then at nighttime, sneak into the villages where he knew the people. And we'd have church in people's houses. It was really cool. Wow. And yeah. And each time I went on that, those two trips that I went on, we got caught because people saw what we were doing or were a little suspicious. Like, you know, because I don't look very much like a... Chinese person. <laughs> you look very Chinese. <laughs> so they would they'd report us and so the police would start looking for us and they just yeah, they were over here yesterday or they were over there. And so after about three or four days they'd catch up with us and they'd say, You're not allowed to do what you're doing. You know, you know, my friend who's you know, the missionary, he would just shame them because shame is a big deal in China. And he would say, what are you do? I'm bringing my friends here to see this countryside and beautiful China. And we got women and children with us. What are you doing? Look at what you're doing. This is a bad example. And they would feel real bad and let us go. <laughs> but they oh, that's so always funny. give us a you're warning. The mercy of God. <laughs> they would always give us a warning, take our passports, write our names down, and say, uh... you're not allowed to talk to anyone about Jesus. You can take your pictures, but you're not allowed to do that. Do you understand? And we would go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd go to the next spot we were going to to pray for people. That would but, be scary. I mean, you just is. knew God kept you, right? Yeah, because, you know, you th I mean, these guys, they're, you know, they're police, they're military police. And, you know, it's pretty, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not uh, easy when you're, when you go through that. It's like, oh, my goodness, you know, what's going to happen next? Because, you know, 
a lot of people end up in jail there. It's a communist country, and they don't yeah. like it very much when you're there uh, doing that sort of thing. But when you have God, you know, at your backside, and you're doing what he wants you to do, he makes a way. So you just want to make sure whenever you're doing this kind of stuff, you are, you know, um, you're, you're doing what the Lord wants you to do. That's all. And get the Amen. green light going. Amen. Yeah, hey, Terry. So there's no fear. Do you mind if we yep. pray for you? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right, cool. All right, so. Heavenly Father, I just just acknowledge you, Lord. I just thank you for all that you're doing in and through Terry. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that Terry is your son. Lord, I thank you for his humility, Lord. I thank you, God, uh, for the increase, Lord. I thank you that, that uh, his heart's right for you, Lord. I thank you that, that he is the one that's sent for you and that's so willing to just be used, Lord. And I just ask you to continue to open up doors, to use him in ways that he couldn't even imagine. Father, I ask that you just continue to, um, yeah, just, just I, I pray just for provision, the, the finances to just continue to yeah. do all that you have for him to do, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that his identity is not in missionary work or, or doing different things, but just being your son. And I thank you through that, he's able to do the stuff that he does um, just by sitting it as a son. And Lord, I thank you that he knows you. I thank you that he carries your father, the father's heart. I thank you, God, uh, for him to just continue to raise up leaders that are going to lead to lead so much. And... Um, yeah, I just thank you for Terry. I thank you for him as a friend, as a spiritual father, as a as a brother. And I just ask you to bless him. I ask you to fill him up, Holy Spirit. I ask you to, to set him on fire like never before. Um, I pray that you just continue to speak life over to him as he wakes up, Lord. I just pray um, that he takes every thought captive under the beatings of Christ when the enemy lies. I just pray that he speaks truth over that. Father, I pray for... Uh, host of heavens to just fight his battles, Lord. I pray that, that the whole armor of God is on him daily. God, I pray that, um, yeah, that there will be no attack against his body. Father, I speak life over every area, uh, over his body, and I just thank you, Lord, that that um, that you're just hand upon him. And, uh, yeah, I just thank you for him. Um, I bless him in the name of Jesus. And amen. Do you can? Amen. Do you have anything more to um, Lord, I just uh, thank you that you are using him, Lord, as your vessel. And just just to hear the stories and the testimonies is just amazing, Lord. And I just thank you for the continuation for that. Lord, I know that you will open more doors and that you will sh um, lead him and guide him exactly where he needs to go. And that he is um, shielded and protected by the blood of Jesus wherever he goes. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet. For his mind, body, soul, spirit, and words is covered by the blood of Jesus. And Lord, we just um, thank you for our brother in Christ here and for the protection of blood around every person that he is around and touches and um, in his travels. And we just uh, thank you, Lord, for your word and for your son and for the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 And Terry, I see a black train. And All it was right. funny because I felt like it was the Johnny Cash song. I think he sings about a song. He has a song about the black train. Oh. And I don't know if it has to do with life. Okay. But I felt like, for one thing, you're going to be on the train and you're getting off at Europe. And God's going to use you to minister in Europe. And then I saw the black train going again, where there's people that are literally bound to hell. And God's going to send you to those people, and you're going to speak life and resurrection power and hope to those people. And then I saw you with chains in your hands that you are, God is sending you to set captives free. And when you set those captives free, you throw these chains into the fire. Like I, I just saw this fire and I saw two things. I saw one, you being invited into like an Indian um, reservation and they were honoring you as a guest and wow. you were being honored around this fire as they danced and celebrated what God was doing in their midst. But yet then I also saw you with the burning bush and God's gonna have 
encounters with you with the holy ground, his, his, his um, burning bush. And he's going to fill you with all those things that sometimes you feel depleted in. And um, he's going to rejuvenate and refresh you. Um, and I just see him using you mightily with great influence. He's going to give you great, even more influence. Like he's opened doors for you, but it's almost like you haven't seen anything yet because you are a father and he's going to put many under you to train and to, to send out and to lead by example into these places. And so father, I just release all that over Terry in Jesus name. And I thank you for the favor, your favor, on his life, God, where there is, there's great influence. You have put him as one who has great influence, Father. So I thank you that as your kingdom comes and your will be done in his life, Father, may the atmosphere shift and change as he goes forward into these places that you send him, Father. So I thank you. I thank you for open doors, favor, finances, and refreshing and re- um, Refueling in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I received. That. Thank you for that. I'm Amen. Amen. Because um, I have, you know, obviously, you, you know, I pray about a lot of this stuff, and I'm like, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it, but uh, if you want to do it, I'm here. I'm, <laughs> I'm available, mm -hmm. but you're going to have to make it, make it so it works, and. Um, that's been uh, uh, on my heart quite a bit, you know, for the Lord's provision to do all the what he wants to do. And I know he'll do it, and I know he'll provide. It's just waiting and seeing how he does it sometimes. And um, yeah. I'm excited because I know he's got a lot of stuff out there that he wants to do. And I just feel um, grateful and thankful myself that he lets me be a part of what he's doing. It's not yeah. me and him. And when... When he lets me be a part of what he's doing, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. What, no matter what else happens, I'm blessed. So, Amen. yeah, Estelle, you think the doors are opening in Europe too, huh? <laughs> That's what I saw. <laughs> See you part, yeah. go part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a new one for me. I was like, oh, I don't know. All right, all right. I'll be looking for that door to open. We'll see what happens. That'll be cool. <laughs> You know, I did one of those ancestry DNA things, you know, just for the fun of it. Yeah. And um, it, I was surprised because I have most of my background is like in Ireland. And I've always had maybe a little bit of a heart to go there. But um, there is some. Where? Uh, oh, Ireland. Uh, yeah. And what I didn't know was I have some ancestry that's in Finland. And wow. So, I saw uh, Switzerland too in the back of my head. I don't know what that was, but I was just like, yeah, yeah. So who knows? We'll see what the Lord has, but he's, he's got know, whatever, plans for you, sir. Whatever he did. You know, <laughs> God's own. Yeah, God. He, he so, so Terry, so, the, so when you went to all the other times on those trips and stuff like that, the, um, the Lord just opened up all those doors and paid for all, all of those other trips and stuff like through missionary work and stuff. Well, actually, no. Uh, most of it I have paid for um, myself. There's been a few trips where uh, I've asked people to help donate, and they have. Um, and some people, you know, generously have done that. But for the most part, I'm, you know, I'm self-employed, and I work so that I can do this. And um, yeah. it's kind of tough. Uh, I got to do a lot. I got to work a lot so I can do it, you know. And that's okay. Sure. I, you know, it's whatever, however the Lord provides, he provides. But that's the way it's been. Yeah. So. It's beautiful, though, because how many people work and do the grind daily, and there is no eternal benefit to that, really. Exactly. Yeah. And, God, and so you're doing the grind, but yet you yeah. get eternal, eternal benefit. It's yeah. a blessing. God. Yeah, it's been good. I mean, God's been, he's been good to me and given me, you know, blessed me along those lines so that I can do it. Sometimes, you know, he just blesses me and then I'm able to do it. Other times when I need it, it comes through others, you know. And so um, however he chooses to do it and provide, I'm, you know, whatever you want to do, Lord, just let it, let it happen. And that's so beautiful, too, because the faith. I mean, you have to have faith every single time because you see the oh. price ticket. And you're like, ah! 
you know. Yeah. I know. Okay, just, this one's on I, you. I was just looking just at still. prices to go back to um, to Nicaragua, and they're like up around eleven hundred dollars for the tickets, and I just paid like three seventy five, and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> but wow. God will do it, you know. He will. I mean, last year the Lord provided. Well, didn't provide, but the tickets were like three fifty to go to Costa Rica, and then it was um, three something to go to Honduras. And actually, somebody else paid for my one trip to Honduras, so I got to go to two places last in February and March. And God, wow. just, you know, God just does it, you know. Amen. And so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot more involved than just the airline tickets, as you guys know. You've been to Africa now, so uh, yeah, you know what the costs are. There's more to it than just. Yep. And um, and not only that, now I'm working with churches. You know, we're trying to help uh, where I was in Nicaragua. This three churches, they have, they're ministering to the children and bringing, you know, trying to, and it's it's such a blessing to see them do that, and it's one way to reach the adults. Because when they minister to the children, then the parents come because, what are you doing with my kids? Well, they're feeding them. <laughs> they're, and they're actually Absolutely. feeding them because they have no food. They have to go to food. They pick through the dump to get food. And so they're trying to start this program where they can feed them every day, just one meal. And wow. I'm trying to help, you know, I'm, I've contacted an organization here in Pittsburgh to see if they'll help us with a little resources. I'm trying to get like three fifty, three hundred fifty dollars a month, which will feed like um probably about sixty kids for the month, one meal a day. Wow. And so if they can do that, not only will they do something that's you know, on God's heart to minister to the children, but it'll also minister to the adults because they'll see what's you know, what the church is doing for them. Amen. So, Father, we just pray for Terry. We pray for that open door now in Jesus' name, a favor for the resources, the 350 a month, Father, yes. to be able to feed these 60 children, God. I thank you for the release of the finances, yes. Father, for this. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Yes. We claim it done. We proclaim it done. Yes. And we just give you glory and honor for the, the testimony of feeding the children in Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, well. I'm glad I stopped in and said hello. Yeah, it was Thank good so to, it was good to so see you. Talking to you. I, I mean, I see you. I love your stories and your testimonies. Yeah, I see. They're faith building. <laughs> I see you yes. guys on from time to time, and then, you know, I'm, this time I just you, I said hi, and you guys say, "Hey, what are you doing? Get on here." <laughs> 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 yes. So I do. <laughs> this is good. This is cool. It's good to now. Definitely good to see who, your face, Terry. Who's holding the dog? Do I know you. Who's holding the dog? No, I'm I'm Jen. I met her tonight too. Jenny. That's my little dog. That's Cooper. Okay, and your yeah. name is Jenny. Okay. Jen or and Jenny? Uh huh. Okay, and Jenny, you um, you were given a testimony earlier about you know what God did for you, with, and and I'm not sure I heard the whole thing as far as what you were going through with your, whatever it was that you were in your body, but what was, was it? What was it diagnosed as? Was it just your immune system? I, I ended up, uh, I had, um, I had urosepsis. So my body became septic. I had a bladder infection that uh, I didn't know uh, I had, and it backed up into my bloodstream. Yeah. Okay. And how, and, um, and how are you now? How, what's the diagnosis now? You, you're okay. I'm totally fine. Totally fine. Totally yeah. healed. Anything that, else? That happened. That happened in October of 2014. Okay. So three, three years ago. Anything else going on in your body that you need prayer for? Um, the, I, have, I had this chest cold that went into my body, and I've been commanding it to leave, and it's like the cough. It's like it's not. It's like I'm like I, I'm like I'm rebuking Satan every day, going get out of me. I'm healed and what so is I, I, What did you call it again? It, I, I had I had a chest cold and it went into like a sinus infection and it went into my my chest. So I keep coughing oh, oh, like you said a every day. A chest cold. 
Yes. And okay. it went, yeah, it, went, it, it ended up okay. starting as a sinus infection and it went into my chest and I just have been like, I'm trying to get rid of the cough. Okay. Can I pray for you? Sure. All right. So Heavenly Father, we just lift up Jenny before you right now. I invite your kingdom to come for her, for your presence to come for her, Father, your Holy Spirit to come for her right now. Let your presence be with her right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, come Holy Spirit. Let her know, let her know, Father, how near you are right now. In Jesus' name, I speak to the uh, congestion in your chest, the root of that. I break that off of you right now in Jesus' name and command it to go. In Jesus' name, any viral or infection, bacterial infection, in Jesus' name, I break it off of you, Jenny. Cancel the assignment of the enemy off of you right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We say yes to you. Yes to you. And Father, I ask for a, a deposit of your spirit right now in Jenny that she would be, she would have boldness, boldness to reach out and pray for others. Yes, Lord. Give her your heart, your compassion right now to reach out and touch others, to be a blessing, to be a blessing to others, to be your vessel, Father. Give her that courage to step out and just be a, a person of encouragement by praying for others. Yes, Lord, yes. Let her heart break for the things that break your heart, Father. And let her see what it is that you're doing. I pray that like Jesus said, he only does what he sees the Father doing that Jenny, your eyes would begin to see what the Father is doing around you. And you would recognize it as him. And he will give you a nudge. And he will say, pray for this person. Ask him if you can pray for them. And he'll begin to do that. And you'll begin to see him do that. So you just need to be, I'm asking for a Holy Spirit to make you sensitive to that right now in Jesus' name. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in Jenny. How do you feel, Jenny, right now? You feel I feel it? good. Feel anything? Yeah, how, yeah I feel good. How, how does your, your yeah. sign feel, your chest feel? Can you breathe? It feels good. Can you yeah. breathe? Can you breathe a little better? Yeah. Can you smell? Okay. Yeah, feel good. Gonna get better. Yes, I feel better. Gonna get yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Now you're not just telling me what I want to hear, right? No. Nope. Right? Nope. You really feel nope. better. I feel good. I feel I feel like that I, it was like pressure and heaviness. Yeah. And now it's yep. gone. I feel it's gone. Amen. Amen. It's gone. Amen. 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 I just really I really felt like the Lord wanted me to pray for you earlier when I heard you give you a testimony, but I didn't know what it was for. And that's just so cool. Yeah. Isn't that cool what Thank God you. does? Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, my gosh. Really He's nice amazing. to meet you. He's amazing. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. I I actually do yeah. have a prayer request for, for us all to pray tonight. Um, so my friend, Leslie, from Victory Church, she just sent her daughter wants this girl. Her name is Kizzy, K-I-Z-Z-I-E. Um, so the story is, um, Les, my girlfriend, Leslie, her daughter, Christina's friend, David and his fiance, fiance, Kizzy was just diagnosed with stage four cancer, breast, lung, and brain, and had an emergency blood transfusion yesterday that didn't go so well. They found out now that it spread to her pancreas and have given her between two days and two weeks to live. And their wedding is supposed to be this Sunday, but they are now moving it to this Thursday at the hospital. Um, so D David has two children from a previous relationship and Kizzy has three from her previous relationship and he wants to be her legal, her children's legal guardian. So um, she needs prayer. Okay. 
Now that's from uh, they go to they go to Victory up in Cranberry. Uh, well, they this girl lives down in Charleston. This oh. girl Kizzy, but there I, I looks like they got free sponsorship for her family and to go to Disney World and for their honeymoon and stuff. So I I, I don't know if they're at in Florida right now for this okay. wedding. The wedding was supposed to take place. And it looks like they got sponsors and venues and stuff and people around Charles, Charleston for them to, for this to happen for Sunday for them. But she just got, she, they're saying that she has two days to two day to two weeks to live now. So she just found out she had this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah. yeah. So, and then okay. it spread everywhere and stuff. So, um, okay. yeah. So it looks like she's got the spirit of death and cancer and everything. Mm -hmm. we need to off of her. <clears throat> well, okay. Um, personally, I like to pray for people, at first, but you remember the story of when the uh, centurion came to Jesus and asked for a prayer and and uh, Jesus said, well, yeah, I'll come with you and pray for your child. He said, no, if you say it, I know it's okay if you just say the word. And, yep. you know, I know we can, pr we can pray and, you know, instead for others, you know, in, in, in behalf of others. And if um, you being that you have brought this to us for prayer, you know, we're going to pray according, all right, that um, for kids. Amen. Or Kizzy, right? Kizzy. Kizzy. All right. We don't know all the circumstances, Father. I don't know all the circumstances, but you know Kizzy. You know her. You know everything that's going on with her right now. Father, we ask for your kingdom. We ask for your kingdom to come for her right now in Jesus' name. That your kingdom would break through into her life, into her body. We break the spirit of cancer off of Kizzy right now in Jesus' name. We break the spirit of death off of her in Jesus' name and command it to go, 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 in Jesus' name, go. All the way out in Jesus' name, go. Not one day do you get, Satan, that God hasn't ordained. You, you cannot shorten her life. Only what yes, the Lord has ordained and let it be. So in Jesus' name, we say yes to you, Lord. Yes to you. And no to the enemy. We say no to cancer in Jesus' name. Over kids, you fall. her brain. Father, you know where, where all the cancer stuff is in her body. So we just rebuke it in Jesus' name right now and command it to go, 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 go. On behalf of yes. Izzy, we say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Do what only you can do. Do what only you can do, Holy Spirit. Yes. We thank you for that. Father, yes. I don't know where she's at with her heart with you, but above all, that she would know that you love her, that you care for her, and you care for those around her. We ask that your spirit be upon her, in Jesus' name, and those around her. Let your yes. love, your love be poured out in greater measures, in Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you. And I pray in the name of Jesus, um, if there's any unclean spirits that's attached to the sickness, um, yes. I just commend every unclean spirit to, to go mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Jesus. We bless you. You don't even know we're praying for you, but we bless you. In Jesus' yes. name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank awesome. you, Terry. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Well, thank you, guys. Nice meeting. God bless you. What's your last name, Terry? Devlin. I'll have Devlin. to friend you. Okay, sure. You'll I'll be one you of my... Facebook. All right, sounds good. You're going to have to share, though. I have, I, have a, I, have, I have a ton of Central American friends now. <laughs> I okay, probably will have... they start friending me then? <laughs> They'll start friending me, right? They might start friending you, yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> they, love, they love America. That happens all the time. I'll be friendly to them. They love America. <laughs> So, they'll, they'll okay. start, there'll be people I don't even know friending me on Facebook. Yeah. Like that, so. Oh, I know. I, know. I gotta, can't speak Spanish, though. You got to be careful. You do. Well, I have a, 
I have to use a translator app, you know, when I'm, when they're texting me so that I can talk to them. I know <laughs> I can say, oh. I can say hi and you know what I want for breakfast and that's about it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, uh, come Holy Spirit, Ben Espiritu okay. Santo. How do you say that? Ben, How do you say come Holy Spirit? Ben Espiritu Santo. Ben, which ben is spelled, Spiritu Santo. Yeah. Yeah. It's spelled V. Yeah, it's V E N, but it's, they pronounce it with a B. A V is yeah. like a B. So it's Ben. Yes. Ben, a spirit to. <laughs> and so, you know, you know, hey, one other cool story. When we were, um, did we go to the Bordos when we were down there, Daniel? No, I don't think so. We went. <laughs> no, I don't think so. We were out in the boonies, but we went to the, this place where these people live in shacks along the river, dirty water really deplorable conditions but we went there to hand out candy and clothes and things and the kids all come run in the parents then show up and we get to proclaim the good news of the kingdom and so i had a team with me and we had interpreters and they all split up to go pray for people when we were done preaching and i'm standing there with nobody i have no interpreter at all right <laughs> and i'm looking around yeah. I'm like all right i know how to say come holy spirit so i laid my hands on this one woman and she started saying Ben Espiritu Santo and um, and I'm looking across the way and I see this other woman and she's looking at me and I was drawn to her. So I went over to pray for her, put my hands on her and said Ben Espiritu Santo and she just started crying. She's like, Ooh. I mean, she was crying and crying. I said, somebody get over here and help me. And so the interpreter came over and I said, find out why she's crying. So he's talking to her and I said, what's going on? He said, she told me that she had a dream, and in her dream, she saw you mm. coming to the village here. And when she saw you, she was like, is he going to pray for me? And so when I came wow. over praying for her, she freaked out, started crying. <laughs> and I said, wow. oh, my goodness. I said, God, you're amazing. I can't, you're killing me. I can't believe you did that. I said, but you know what? Whatever, tell her whatever it is that she needs. God's going to answer that prayer. If he gave you that dream and now I'm here, he's going to answer your prayer. What is it that you want? And here she had, some, she had some internal things going on, some cysts and stuff going on inside her body that she'd been diagnosed with. I prayed for her. And you should have seen her afterwards. Her countenance just totally changed, smile and everything. Yeah, I, went God. Back, I went back six months later and the pastor was like, there's stuff in the back. There she was with her whole family coming to church now. Wow. Yeah. So Thank you, Lord. Tons of, tons of stories like that. They're in my That's book. That's beautiful testimonies. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> They're God set ups, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what's really cool is when God sets you up like that and then you get to be a part of it, you know? That's just, Amen. It, blew, it blew me away, you know? And uh, some other time I'll tell you some other stories, you know, but the first one was when we the first trip with Kevin, we went to the prison, it's like 3,000 prisoners in there, and they, they let you in, they shut the door, and they don't go in with you. You're in there by yourself. But we were we had a, a pastor inside the prison who was an inmate that was a prisoner, but he kind of, we went and did this church service with 200 prisoners and worship, and then we invited, you know, preached the kingdom and invited them forward for prayer. And this guy comes forward to me, and I could see his one eye was all white. He had a scar down his cheek like somebody hit him with a machete. And he's coming to me. And I'm like, this is my first trip to Honduras, you know. <laughs> oh, Lord, not me, <laughs> please. You know. Go to Kevin. Go to Kevin. <laughs> can't you just, you know, somebody with a sore elbow, not a blind eye, you know. And, well, it's a long story, but I prayed for him three times and I saw his lens just and he got a new eyeball. It was the very first person I prayed for in Honduras, I think. And I was just like, Lord, you're killing me. I can't believe you're doing this. So, you're anointed. Amen. You know, and you're letting That's me, so beautiful. And you're letting me be a part of it. It's nuts. I want to go That's home. Right. Send me home. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. all right. That's there enough stories go. I think for tonight. Thank you so All much right. for well, sharing them with us. Love you so much. Too. Thank you. Yes. And God bless you guys. Keep doing what you're doing. It's an encouragement, you know, to the body out there. 
And uh, that's, it's great. I love it, what you guys are doing. God bless you and give you more and more and more and more. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank more, you. More anointing of the Holy Spirit when you pray for people, encourage them with the love of God. Amen. I mean, Amen. the main, main thing is that they know that God loves them. So Amen. when he does the yes. miracle, it's awesome too, but that they know that, you know, he loves them and that you guys would have the love and the compassion that God has for them would just flow right through you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All Thank right. You, Father. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, yeah. Terry. All right. We'll see. Yeah. I don't, how do I shut this thing off? I don't even know. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'll do it. Right? Have a great day.